No evidence of vote fraud in this election? There's plenty at this point. An election training video in Detroit, hashtag Detroit Leaks, shows that ballot counters were instructed to enter challenge ballots into vote tabulating machines in Wayne County. Normally, challenge ballots would be set aside and not counted. And White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany told Sean Hannity this week that the Trump campaign has 234 pages of sworn affidavits from witnesses alleging vote fraud. They are alleging this is one county, Wayne County, Michigan. They are saying that there was a batch of ballots where 60% had the same signature. They are saying that 35 ballots uh, had no voter record, but they were counted anyway. That 50 ballots were run multiple times through a tabulation machine. Uh, that one woman said her son was deceased, but nevertheless somehow voted. In Nevada, at least 10,000 non-residents were allowed to send in ballots for counting there. And what about Pennsylvania and other states? Well, here to share some evidence is Neil McCabe. He's communications director at Project Veritas. Neil, thanks for your time. So I know your organization and James O'Keefe are known for your many undercover videos. We've shown portions of them over the years. Now, you've received more than 12,000 tips about fraud this time. Some from whistleblowers afraid to come forward. So tell us what you've discovered overall. Well, you know, Gary, it, we've received, as you said, thousands and thousands of phone calls and emails, and we're sifting through all of them. We're, uh, we have a special team of people dedicated to make sure that we, you know, we sort of separate the wheat from the chaff. Uh, but we do have very important whistleblowers who have come forward. Two postal workers in Travis City, Michigan, confirmed to us that late ballots were being collected, sorted separately, so that they could be postmarked November 3rd. And these are late ballots that came in after Election Day. Richard Hopkins, who is a mail carrier in Erie, Pennsylvania, he came forward with a similar account. He said that he overheard his postmaster rebuking a supervisor because one of the late ballots that came in was postmarked November 4th instead of the 3rd. Now, Hopkins said he heard this on the morning of November 5th. Now, Hopkins originally spoke to us with a disguised voice and a blurred face. Eventually, he decided he wanted to come on the record with his own name, and so he did that. He also swore out an affidavit, which was submitted to the Senate Judiciary Committee and acknowledged by Cal uh, South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham as being a keystone document in his investigation into election fraud. Since then, uh, Hopkins has received tremendous pressure to change his account, and he endured more than three hours of an interrogation from an agent from the Post Office Inspector General Office who was flown in from New York City, Gary, to basically work him over and to, quote, update, unquote, his statement. Okay. This uh, Inspector General, go ahead. Okay, Neil, I want to show a clip of that right now because we have a clip that you guys uh, provided. So here it is. It's getting crazy, right? And it's, it's out of a lot of people's control. And so the reason they called me in is to try to harness that storm, try to reel it back in before it gets really crazy. We like to control our mind. And when we do that, we can convince ourselves of a memory. I'm not scaring you, but I am scaring you. Neil, the Washington Post reported that after that federal interrogation, Hopkins recanted his story, but Hopkins later released a video saying that's not true. So what's going on here? Is Hopkins believable? Yeah, Gary, I think if you go back to that Washington Post story, you'll see that they have updated their headline and their story to include Hopkins' statement. What Hopkins said is that he was worked over. He was, they gave him fear and anxiety. They told this guy, Richard Strasser, who was from the IG's office at the post office headquarters in New York, he told him that he was going to be in trouble because he could be accused of deception because he raised more than $130,000 on a GoFundMe page. Now, Hopkins was very anxious. He was uh, very concerned. Strasser told him, the only way I can protect you is that you sign this statement to amend what you said before. Now, Hopkins didn't have a lawyer present. He didn't have a union rep present. He thought that Strasser was trying to protect him. 
and he signed it. Now, after he signed it, Hopkins asked for a copy of the document. Strasser said, I can't give you a copy of it because it is part of an ongoing investigation. The next thing Hopkins knows, he's put on administrative leave without pay, and that document that Strasser said he couldn't have a copy of was released by House Democrats with the headline that Hopkins admitted that he lied. Hopkins did not lie. Hopkins stands by his account, and he recorded the more than two hours or three hours that he was in that room with Strasser. Also, I want to get to Michigan in a minute, but another one in Pennsylvania, in Bucks County, you found destroyed ballots, and then the director of the elections there verified the authenticity <clears throat> of those ballots, so they weren't fake. Tell us about that. Why is it worrisome? Our project uh, Veritas journalists were poking around Bucks County. They went to a closed election center that had been opened to handle sort of the flux from Election Day. They saw the bags of trash. They said, hey, let's just grab these bags of trash, take them back to the hotel and see what's in it. They opened it up. They found roughly a dozen ballots that were what they call spoiled ballots. And uh, many of them have been ripped up by hand. Pennsylvania state law says that spoiled ballots must, must be kept under lock and key for 22 months, and they are part of any recount, so that inspectors conducting the recount can verify whether they indeed are spoiled or not. Obviously, if there's a recount in Pennsylvania, spoiled ballots thrown in the garbage are not going to be part of that, and obviously it was a violation of law. We're seeing these irregularities all over the place, Gary. Yeah, yes, Neil, and of course there's no evidence of any widespread fraud here, but we've got plenty of uh, examples. Let's go back to Michigan. Poll watchers in Detroit say thousands of mail-in ballots were counted from people who were not properly registered. At least 10,000 mail-in ballots were returned from dead people. And here's a, uh, a whistleblower, right, a short clip from your uh, video of a post office in Traverse City, Michigan, the Barlow branch. We were issued a directive this morning to collect any ballots we find in mailboxes, collection boxes, just outgoing mail in general, separate them at the end of the day so that they could uh, hand stamp them with the previous day's date. Today is November 4th, for clarification. We spoke to a second mailman and also in Traverse City, Michigan. He did not want to come on a recorded line with us, but he confirmed his account saying that the same thing was happening in his post office. Listen, Gary, with so much of this election and so many of these ballots being passed through the post office, the integrity of the post office has a direct relationship to the integrity of the election itself. Okay, you're asking for more whistleblowers, others who have witnessed the vote fraud to get in touch with Project Veritas. How can they do that, Neil? The best way to get in touch with us is at Veritas Tips at ProtonMail.com. Okay, Neil McCabe of Project Veritas, thank you for your time and insights today. Thanks for having me on, Gary.